Hey, I'm Rob from JustTheRoad.com and I'm going to show you how to play Challengers. This is a game for 1-8 to eight players, plays in about 45 minutes, it's designed by Johannes Krenner and Marcus Sloritschek and is published by Z-Man Games. Players are building a deck of wacky and wonderful characters to win a capture the flag tournament. The two players with the most fans after 7 rounds go into a final and the winner of the final wins the tournament. So why not capture my heart by clicking subscribe? I'll be your biggest fan. Ok, the layout of this video is as follows. First, the rules for a 3-8 to eight player game. Then the rules for using a robot for games with odd numbers of players. Then the changes for a game with two players. Then how to play solo. And finally, we'll look at some of the card abilities. Let's look at the setup for a game with three to eight players, starting with getting the tournament plans. Each of these double sided cards shows the number of players that particular plan is relevant for, so make sure you end up with one per player. Check the colours on the cards and lay out the appropriate colour mats. For example, in a three to four player game, you'll only use the red and green mats. And as the players will be playing 1v1, you need to make sure they could sit at each end of the mat. Put the matching colour flag on each mat. Shuffle all of the trophies face down. Randomly create a stack of 7 numbered 1 to 7 with 1 on top, 7 on the bottom and put the stacks on the trophy space of each mat. Put the fan tokens in a pile. Put the A, B and C card trays out. These card trays will of course hold all the cards, so make sure they're placed somewhere convenient where all players can draw from them. Let's look at setup for the decks of cards. The game will always use the city deck, shown with the city set icon. Be sure to separate those with an S in the bottom right. These are the player starting decks. Then use any five of the other decks. However, it is suggested that you do not play with the red coloured outer space deck in your first game. Shuffle all of A, B and C cards from the chosen decks into three separate piles and put them in their holder. Give a tournament plan to each player. Players take the 6 card starting deck matching the symbol on their tournament plan. This tournament plan is used in every game and as the player with this plan never moves, make sure it goes to the player that may find this useful. On to gameplay which is played over 7 rounds of 2 phases, the deck phase and the match phase. In the deck phase, players will draw cards as shown on the tournament plan depending on the current round. So in round 1, the players will draw 2 cards from the A deck. In round 3, players will either draw 2 cards from the A deck or 1 card from the B deck. When drawing cards, players draw 5 cards from the deck, keep the number shown, then discard the ones they do not keep to the relevant card holder. Once per deck phase, the player may discard the drawn cards and draw new cards from the same deck. If you're drawing 2 cards, you can keep one from the initial draw of 5, discard the other 4, draw 4 more and pick one from those. Then players may discard any number of cards from their deck as they like. A, B and C cards to the relevant discard pile. Starter cards with the S can be returned to the box. Then players find their seat which is shown on the tournament plan. For example, in round 1 this player will sit on the light side of the green mat as shown on the tournament plan card and in the corner of the relevant mat. And once everyone has their deck, has found their seat and is ready to go, we can move on to the match phase. Players shuffle their deck and place it at the edge of their mat. It's important to note that from now on a player cannot shuffle or reorder their deck unless a card ability tells them to. Even if a card asks you to, for example, look through your deck for a card and put it on top, you find the card, put it on top, but you still do not shuffle or change the order of any other cards. In the first round, to determine the start player, you perform a flag toss. For a flag toss, one player tosses the flag and depending on if it lands on the light or dark side, the player at that end of the mat goes first. In future rounds, the player with the highest number individual trophy starts, using a flag toss in case of a tie. The start player flips over the top card of their deck and gives that card the flag. They are now in flag possession. The other player will now attack until they control the flag. When your opponent has the flag, you are on the attack. They reveal cards one at a time until their attack power is higher than their opponent's flag possession power. As soon as it's higher, they stop revealing cards. So let's look at power and come back to attacking. Base power is the power printed on the card. For example, Champion has a base power of 4. The attack power is the total of all cards power plus all of the power bonuses. For example, these 3 cards have an attack power of 7. The flag possession power is the power of the flag carrier plus all of their power bonuses. As mentioned earlier, we'll cover abilities and power bonuses at the end of this video. So the flag possession power is 4. The player needs an attack power of 5 or more, so they reveal a card. Talent has 2, which isn't enough, so the next card is the dog, which has 3. The attack total of 5 is now higher than the flag possession power of 4, so they stop revealing cards. Slide all attacking cards together and take the flag from the opponent. The opposing player now has to beat the flag possession power of the top card only, which in this case is 3. When a player loses the flag, all of the cards in their attacking stack are placed on the 6 bench spaces at the side of the mat. Matching cards take the same seat on the bench. This continues back and forth until one of the two end game conditions is met. 
If a player runs out of cards in the deck while on attack and is unable to capture the flag, they lose. If a player needs to add a new card to the bench but there is no space, they lose. The winner of the match takes the trophy for the round. Any fans and trophy token values are kept hidden throughout the game. Players gather all of the played cards and go to the next round. After seven rounds, the two players with the most fans on fan tokens and trophies have one final match. They don't draw any new cards, but they can discard any number of cards from their deck before the match if they wish. If there's a tie for the top two players, the player with the most trophies makes it to the final. If it's still a tie, the player with the single highest round number trophy wins. And the winner of that final game is the champion. Now in a game with an odd number of players, the player without a human opponent will play against the bot. If possible, give the bot the tournament plan that has all the green icons so the bot doesn't move, but obviously prioritise a human if needed. The robot has S cards, R cards and solo cards for the solo game. For starters, just use all of the S cards for the robot deck and return the rest to the box. The robot does not have a deck phase and the player playing against the robot will shuffle and reveal the cards from the robot deck as well as their own. If the robot should win a trophy, instead return it to the box. The robot does not gain fans and cannot make it to the final match. If you find the robot too easy, there are extra robot cards you can use to make the robot player stronger. Level 1, the basic robot just uses all S cards as mentioned. For level 2, replace Alpha with a random R card. For level 3, also replace Beta with a random R card. For level 4, also replace Good Bot with a random R card. And for level 5, also replace the Champ card with two random R cards. Onto the two player game which is very straightforward. Trophies and fans are kept face up throughout the game and the player with the most fans after 7 rounds is the winner, no final 8th game. But if a player has at least 11 fans more than their opponent at the end of a match they will win the game instantly. Now the rules for a solo game which are again very straightforward, just use the two player rules against the bot. When making the robot deck you can add the solo cards to the R cards before randomly adding them into the deck for the various bot levels. Ok now let's look at some card effects and keywords. First, should abilities need it, that final match is still considered round 7, even though it's technically the 8th match, should any card abilities reference the round number. Per set icon is all set icons. For example, the teenager gets plus 1 for each haunted house set icon. If there are 2 bats on the bench, this counts as 2 haunted house set icons, so the teenager will get plus 2 from these. The starter cards have an S in the bottom corner and have a city icon and count as that set for the purpose of abilities. Rare just means there are fewer than 4 copies of this card in the game. For example, Parrot has rare times 3, as there are 3 copies of it in the game. In the same way, common means there are more than a normal number of copies. For example, there are 8 skeletons. Cards like the fan bus let you take fans, and when you do, take the number of them from the supply. Cards that save from the bench are only active while they are on the bench. The sorcerer refers to your exhaust pile. This is a separate pile removed from the current match. These cards will be shuffled back into the deck at the end of the match. During the attack means just that. The knight's ability will trigger only during the attack and as soon as you take flag possession, even if they are the flag carrier, the effect will not be active. In flag possession means the character's ability is only active while they are the flag carrier. Flag loss abilities only trigger if the character is the flag carrier and they lose the flag. Cards like the vampire refer to a card level which is shown in the bottom right of the card. For example, the vampire is a level C card. The sci-fi geek has the keyword when picked. These are activated when picked in the deck phase. That's the main keywords of card abilities and that's how you play challenges. Thanks for watching, remember to like, share and subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when a new video goes live. You can follow me on Insta, Twitch and YouTube at Jester the Rogue and find the blog at JesterTheRogue.com. I've been Rob aka Jester the Rogue and I'll see you soon.